Welcome. Uh, as uh, Tom was just mentioning, uh, we're really excited to be here. Uh, uh, this is our third time uh, in front of uh, uh, this audience. The first time was when we had just come out of stealth uh, and uh, at our original venue back in our garage in Palo Alto. We've now moved to Santa Clara, a little bit closer to Intel uh, corporate headquarters, and uh, really excited today to talk to you and uh, um, you know, those, those of you here in the room and all of the virtual attendees and tell you a little bit more about uh, how Barefoot uh, technology is fitting into the greater uh, Intel technology connectivity portfolio of solutions. Um, my name is Ed Doe. I'm the VPGM of the Barefoot division inside of the data center group at, uh, at Barefoot. And we've got a really action-packed uh, uh, day uh, here, or a couple hours, with uh, a couple of great presenters to give you a little bit of an update on what's, uh, what's gone on over the last uh, little bit here. Um, there's uh, an obligatory disclosure disclaimer slide uh, that, I now have to, uh, that I now have to present, but moving on. One of the first things I will start with is an interesting stat is, and I think it really talks to about how Intel thinks about the data-centric world which is, it's really simple. It's over half of the world's data was actually created in the last two years, but less than 2% of it has yet to even be analyzed. And so if you think about how Barefoot and the connectivity portfolio fits into the data center side of Intel, it really fits in quite well. You can think of it as really formed on three pillars. One is to move faster, and that's clearly where the Barefoot piece of things fits in, store more, Intel has some amazing memory and storage technology that's out there, and process everything. So that's really about all that data being stored but needing to be analyzed and to be able to do it faster, to be able to catch up with this ever-arching theme. And so you can see very clearly with the move faster side of things, Barefoot uh, really finally fills out that portfolio of where Intel's been really leading with uh, Ethernet NICs, as well as recently has become a number one market share leader with regards to optics and silicon photonics in the 100 gig space. Um, with Store More, uh, Intel's been doing some very exciting things with new memory technology around Optane, uh, not just with solid state drives, but also bringing a new memory tier with persistent memory. And then, of course, processing everything, Intel's really evolved beyond uh, just the classic side of processing where most people are familiar with Intel in terms of cores and atoms and Xeons, but really starting to evolve beyond that into uh, AI processors like the Nirvana and Mavidius uh, technology that's going after AI training and inference, and then using FPGAs is as well uh, known in a number of hyperscale data center environments. And what's really important and really goes to the barefoot story is how software really allows for all of this to tie together. And that really goes from within the connectivity portfolio as programmability becomes an ever increasing trend for all of the connectivity side of things, as well as how do you bring software all the way across this portfolio and make it really seamless to take advantage of all this technology. And that's really interesting. Intel has some new initiatives around one API to make it seamless to move work loads across all of these different processors and engines that it has. And then, of course, software has been really important to what Barefoot has done with our formation right from the beginning has really been around this language P4, which we've really been pioneers in bringing that concept of a language for network programmability um, to many different workloads. So this is a diagram that I'm sure this audience really well understands is uh, is really about how critical it is for connectivity and really where all three pieces of that move faster technology really fit in. Obviously, the silicon photonics, uh, the interconnect, as the number of layers in data center networks everly uh, continue to increase is really, really important. And there's a lot of it. Uh, Intel has grown and pioneered really this concept of silicon photonics to become the number one provider of this technology in a lot of the large scale data centers. And so you're going to start to see more of this. There's obviously the switching tier, of course, what you see many of those, everything from the top rack to the leaf to the spine and to aggregation. And then, of course, the NICs going from smart NICs and foundational NICs that exist obviously inside of the server and storage tiers as well. So pretty easy to understand. Um, Intel in Nix, and you're going to hear a little bit about that uh, after the Barefoot presentation today, is a little bit more about the recent uh, uh, recent uh, products from the Intel Ethernet NIC 
portfolio. Intel's actually been a pioneer here, uh, been providing Intel Ethernet NICs for over 30 years. There's the Ethernet switch portfolio, which we'll talk a little bit about. Um, the silicon photonics, which is the optics, and then Intel's also been working on leading HPC fabrics with uh, OmniPath as well. So bringing it a little bit back uh, to Barefoot, where are we today? When we first came out of Stealth a couple of years ago, we had just announced our first generation, which was really bringing that market-leading programmability all the way from 1.8 terabit up to 6.4 terabits, and that was with our Tofino 1 generation in 16 nanometer. Now, uh, last year, uh, Barefoot announced the Tofino 2 generation, bringing that programmability up to the 12.8 terabit, and really starting to introduce this with, na with 400 gig connectivity, 200 gig connectivity, even denser 100 gig connectivity. But one of the interesting things that we did here is we started to be able to branch out and use this programmability to address many new parts of the network. And one of the powerful things that we have with programmability is we're able to adapt the amount of resources to the workload in the network. Before and at the beginning, we were really focused at being able to prove that you could do programmability with no compromise. And now we have many large OEM partners that are doing this and showing that you can take advantage of programmability there. And that was really establishing us in the mainstream. But now we're able to take the power of silicon and be able to bring even more resources and expand into new markets. For example, large capacity, internet scale routing, service provider applications, telcos, and start to allow people to make even richer and richer switches. But one of the other counterintuitive aspects of it is many of the hyperscalers are using Barefoot's technology and Tofino here to actually start to thin out. Everybody knows how a lot of the hyperscalers have taken advantage of the technology and they've really tried to simplify their networks. When you go big, you kind of have to simplify things down. And that's, that's what's been well known even in the processing space. You sometimes don't use the biggest, beefiest cores that you would work use in all the different other places in the network or your infrastructure. But we now have a hyperscale optimized series, which really is optimized for power and efficiency. And think of it, it just uses fewer programming elements and does exactly what that hyperscaler needs. And so it's really been allowed us to expand into two new markets from that side. And so what's new with uh, Barefoot? One, we're uh, one of the first uh, switch, technology, uh, switch technology providers to bring seven nanometer to the market, which is the latest and greatest in silicon technology. That really allows us to scale everything from 6.4 terabit all the way up to 12.8 um, uh, terabit and start to allow for 400 gig links, which are starting to get used uh, in some of these new data centers. Plus, we're taking advantage of a new chip building architecture, which you can kind of see diagram from the images here on the right, is a modular chip building architecture. And this is really the way forward that other parts of Intel have been pioneering here and we've been embracing as well. So it allows you to use the right amount of I.O. in the version of Tofino 2 that you need so that you don't have to pay for a 12.8 terabit if you're not using all of that different I.O. And so we use these little chiplets that give you the exact amount of I.O. that you need. And so you can see versions with four chiplets all the way down to, to two chiplets as well. On the optics side of things, uh, as I mentioned, Intel has really been leading with 100 gig and has established a market leadership position there. With 400 gig, just last week, we were actually showing Tofino 2 working with the latest and greatest from Intel's 400 gig optics at a conference in Europe uh, where we were showing a Tofino 2 using 100 gig, 200 gig, and 400 gig optics, all, uh, all from Intel there. But what's really interesting and to stimulate, I guess, your mind a little bit down the road and where we see a lot of potential synergy here is about that future for optical integration. And as you know, switches sit right next to their interconnect links and it doesn't mean that every interconnect link is gonna be optical from that side, but in many of these larger scale data centers, one of the places where we can save a lot of power and cost is by bringing these two technologies together. And it's becoming increasingly difficult to be able to bring all of this I.O. out and do it efficiently without having to have a very big system. Um, and so what we're really excited about is to be able to work together with the other parts of Intel to bring this optically integrated future uh, down the road. So just wanted to leave you with that in terms of a little bit of an idea. The other uh, exciting thing that we're really, we're, we're really looking forward to is how do we bring this idea now of a P4 programmable fabric and interconnect 
all of this storage in all of these different processors. And we've been talking a little bit about that, and you're going to hear a little bit about some of these new ideas of these new fabrics. How do you create a, a fabric or network specifically for AI? And what can the, a smart computational fabric is the way we like to think of the P4 programmable fabric that we do. And how does it efficiently interconnect all of this together? And it's even more important now that it's not just about con connecting standard servers, but around all these do new processors. And so we really see the power of P4 allowing us to enable all of this, all of this new future that's coming out there. And so that's, uh, that's, that's what I wanted to start off with. We've got some great presentations uh, today. Uh, very, I think, forward-looking, telling you a little bit about where the future is going to be in a couple of years and allowing you to understand and imagine where that future of Barefoot with Intel is really going to bring, bring together and kind of give you a lens uh, maybe a few years into the future th that way. Got a quick question for yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. So can you talk about product position in terms of, um, like, with Intel, obviously, with the next side, right? Right. With that side of the business. Is there, and I know it's sort of forward-looking, but I imagine you guys looking to say, I want to take a subset of what we provide at our Tofino today and put that directly in so that at cloud scale 25 and 50 starts to get some of the advantages directly on land on motherboard configurations. Right. So vision-wise, is that that seems to fit with what you guys like? Absolutely. Out. I mean, I think it'll start initially with a couple of things. One of the things that we're very proud of at Barefoot is one of the first applications for programmability was actually a very simple, straightforward use case. And it was about instrumenting in telemetry and one that we've, I think we even demoed here as an idea and then brought to market a year later as a full-on product. It was called Deep Insight. And Barefoot had been a pioneer with this idea of in-band network telemetry. Right. And so clearly bringing that kind of technology end-to-end, -end, not just instrumenting the network, but also instrumenting the NIC, the server, bringing it all the way there. The second key piece is also P4. If you start to have programmable elements, as NICs have generally become smarter and smarter, right. how do you use an abstract concept or a high-level programming language like P4 to unify that model so that you can have a workload, a networking workload that might exist in a NIC, and you bring it up to the next scale, extend it into the network, or vice versa. And really having that concept of a one programming model will allow you to do that. And obviously, there's always the opportunity to continue to build up NICs down the road. And as NICs get smarter, there's a lot of talk about smart NICs uh, as well. And sometimes those, those engines can get hard-coded. For example, a concept now like telemetry has pretty much become ubiquitous in the last, last two years. So hard-code that. Sometimes it might make sense to bring that in in a programmable engine. And so I would say with INT and P4, the two uh, early steps that we're going to see, but beyond that, uh, you're going to see obviously all points in the network become more and more intelligent. And then I'm assuming the investment on the photonic side of saying, hey, can we get that in in line for the series of chips and you're partnering right with you know Edgecore and everyone else to be able to build some of that capability wise, that's also going to make that same sort of integration all the way down onto. The, yeah, the next uh, side, right? So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, you need to switch to talk to the sure, next. Sure, sure. But I mean, there's... from an from a strategic investment standpoint, though, with you guys lining up that way, yeah. Said, does that mean that some of the fundamental architectures for Trofino will actually change based off of the fact that you're moving that direction? Because that's I, I don't think any of the architecture will full fundamentally change. I think what we'll be able to do is be able to expand into new product portfolios and be able to adapt to different mar market needs. I think. It's really what it's always been in technology about integrating more and more pieces. Uh, one of the things is in a switch, you have, think of in a 12.8 terabit, one you, uh, 12.8 terabit switch, you have 128 gig, uh, 28, 100 gig links. So the integration benefits of doing that optical integration there right. are much more significant than say at the NIC where you'd right. have one or two, uh, two ports. And so I think the initial point is there how do you bring it at scale, and then you can bring it to the rest of the portfolio, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. 